to talk about where my motivation to be an artist comes from. Um, so when I was younger, um, in you know high school and in college and, and uh, early twenties, I had sort of the normal ambitions that you could have with youth. I, I was, you know, I want to be famous, I want to make money, I want to have recognition for my talent, I want all those things, and I worked for those things. And then, you know, it all started to dry up. Like, that motivation just dried up, and it left me, and, you know, somewhere in my late 20s, um, it was gone. And, I, and so I was left with this question, why do I make art? You know, so I always knew I was going to make art. I'm never going to do anything else. That's not a question. But why do I make it? So um, I started to, I found some answers um, in uh, some, started reading some spiritual texts. And uh, so my new sort of motivational points became, uh, I, I want to make art to serve. Like I want to make art from a point of love. Like I'm tired of the game. Like I want I want to have like a more authentic motivation. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of my public art today. This is a piece that I did for a community center center in Canoga Park it's called Tierra del Sol. And uh, when you make public art, you, you really have to come from a different starting point. Like, you, you don't go in and say, I'm plopping down my ideas and you guys can look at it. <laughs> you know, you have to sort of, um, you go and you observe. You go and you learn from the community and you see, like, what they're interested in. Um, this particular community center, is, it's a low-income place that uh, has a lot of uh, young children and families. And um, they wanted something uplifting, inspiring, something that talked about their neighborhood, and this is what we came up with. It's a 12 by 8 foot mural. Um, <laughs> so um, I used this kind of a backstory. I used my family for the models. So this is my sister, her three kids, and her husband. <laughs> um, kind of classic imagery, you know, sun sprouting. I'm sure you get the picture. Um, my first public art project was for uh, MacArthur Park uh, Metro Station, as Dana said. I, I won it in 2007, and I did 13 separate images that, um, that show how wonderful MacArthur Park is. Now, I grew up right next to MacArthur Park. It was really scary. <laughs> I, I thought, it was, you know, we used to go to Langer's, like you said, growing up, and it smelled like pee um, on the street. Uh, you know, I thought it was a dangerous place. So when the Metro assigned me that station, I was like, oh my god, I imagined all of these uh, <laughs> men, guns, and labor. Yeah. I just, I, these are the images that came to me. Um, and then um, I started to research. Like, this was the, my first project, too, like, imagine this. Um, I went to the park, and I hung out. Like, I talked to the people in the park. I talked to the community activists. I talked to the business owners. And I found out that, well, one for one, things have changed there. Like, it's, the crime is way down, and it's um, not like it was in the 90s. Um, and I also found out that it's in a really important park for hundreds of thousands of people. Like, that, uh, use, it's the only open space for a lot of tenement-style buildings. And, it's a, you know, it's like a place for recreation. So um, my design concept was um, that the outer... Um, the outer border represents the cement of the city, and I use all of those little um, details were from sort of the Art Deco build era buildings around the park. And then the inner circle represents um, the urban oasis, so the pe the of the park. So the piece is called MacArthur Park Urban Oasis, and there's 13 separate medallions, and there's a lot of historical. Um, references in them, and just pictures of people enjoying the park, basically. This is Langer's, and um, if you, it's a Jewish deli if you don't know. And that's Al Langer, and the, the original um, owner, and his son, Norm. And I took that photo myself, and uh, just soon after, um, the father passed away. So I was able to memorialize him um, in this piece. Uh, the, the way it was made is really interesting. Um, it went to Montreal to be fabricated, and they created these huge stencils of my art. Oh, by the way, these are linoleum cut prints, the, the ones I showed you before. 
that I made, and they're about 20 by 20 inches, that I made them in my studio, and I sent them to Montreal. And uh, they, with a powder, um, put the image onto slabs of porcelain clay, and they had a team of about 20 who car hand carved them to exactly replicate like the way I make linoleum, which is really awesome. Um, it took up three years to finish this project. Um, you can see the uh, side view, how it's in relief, and this is how they look. Wow. They're really cool. And uh, we uh, won a public art award last year for this, which is really nice. You know, both for the designs, but also the amazing fabrication from Mosaica in Montreal. So, um, you know, all of these uh, characters, or most of them, are, are photographs I took myself. Um, you can see how it came out. Wow. It's cool because the outside is molded and the inside is in relief. Mm -hmm. And then the walls in there were already red and blue. So that's the blue side. And this is the red side. And yeah, you're welcome to go and check that out right there in the mezzanine level of MacArthur Park. And, and that's a direct trip from here, isn't it? It is. Yeah, you guys right here. Yeah. Cool. All right, so um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about my studio art um, after this one. So this is a paper cut. Um, I also make art you know, for galleries and museums and things like that. So um, my, I'm really into cutting paper. After 10 years of cutting linoleum, I segued into paper, and it's just so, it's like cutting butter in comparison. <laughs> um, and this is a, from a show I had this year at Vincent Price Art Museum. And this piece is called Inner Landscape. So um, like continuing with this idea of my motivation, um, because I've been exploring like this um, so much in the last maybe three years, uh, my artwork has been a lot about like um, self-awareness and you know ways to um, to awaken and explore this world like beautiful things. So I you know a lot of my work shows these sort of inner dialogues like literally inside the body. Like uh, land this one's called inner landscape because it's like the landscape inside, right? Um, these are, uh, it's like, um, I call them a married couple. Hmm. Sort of my idea of men are male and female. Um, he's sort of straight and, and deathly and quiet. She's sort of wild and crazy. And roses and flowers. Yeah. So it's really cool. I do a lot of experimenting in my studio. Like I'm a printmaker and I also paint. But um, these are paper cuts that I inked and printed. So I'm always like inventing new ways of printing, and I actually have these with me today in the back, so you can come see them. This is a painting, so it's like about six feet. Um, called Bee Fantasy. So it's cool because it has prints on it, but these are actually block prints that I have um, collaged onto the acrylic. Like I'm always mixing media. Um, this is a piece called Bee Pile. I was really interested in that whole um, disappearing of the honeybees, the colony collapse disorder. Really, uh, I, had a, I had a whole series about food politics I'm not going to go into today, but um, this was from that. But then, you know, the be bees became so amazing to me. And actually, with this piece, I learned by watching that uh, bee documentary um, that bees were a symbol of the feminine because, like, they're mostly all yeah. female. And then, oh, I didn't even know that. I, I learned that after I made this painting, but then now it all makes sense, you know. <laughs> and um, this is my latest work. I just finished it this month. It's in a show called Domestic Disobedience in San Diego Mesa College. And um, it was kind of a feminist show, Latino show. And um, this piece is called Deep Heart Yearning. Um, it's acrylic painting, and then the, uh, the tree is a paper cut. It's cool because it has some space between them, so when you see them in real life, there's a shadow. Really fun. Um, so this is about, like, uh, it kind of came to see it later as a cage. The tree is a cage, but like having this yearning and like, really wanting something, but not knowing what it was or how to get it. And uh, this is the second, it's a triptych. So this one is called Awakening, and um, she's coming out, but she's kind of um, 
unsure, doesn't know if she wants to, it's kind of scary. Um, I mean, I, I love to hear people's interpretations, so these are my interpretations, but you know, I'm sure you guys have some interesting things to say about this. And uh, the third one is, she's out of there. <laughs> called ecstasy. So um, the idea is that when you finally get out, it's, it's amazing, but we're all too scared to go there. And um, so this last piece I have to show you right now, um, this is a line of cut, and it's from a new series I'm working on called Endless Landscape. They're gonna, I'm going to make like a bunch of these uh, backgrounds that all connect, and then the character is going to change from piece to piece, another way to play. Um, I brought a bunch of prints in the back. Uh, they're my smaller works that I, I use, like they're playful, just little things, so you can get the idea of how things look in real life. Um, and I have, would love to see you guys on Facebook. Uh, I have that you can come to my gallery. I have an opening every second Saturday of the month in Highland Park. And um, you know, look forward to talking to you afterwards.